announcement time. We're finally launching a new premium course on our Patreon. And somewhat predictably, it's all about machine learning. Now, this course has one main goal, and it is to make machine learning the next tool in your Houdini toolbox. Just like some problems are best solved with vector math or VEX or Python, some problems get way easier with machine learning, and we want you to be able to spot these problems and solve them using your own custom networks. The way we're tackling these problems is very much inspired by the demos we've seen from side effects in their recent Houdini keynotes. We want to create our own training data in Houdini. We build and train our own neural nets using this trading data. And finally, we integrate them into our Houdini workflows using Onyx. Additionally, we want to take really, really deep looks into how these setups work and why they built the way they are to give you a ton of intuition for applying these techniques to new problems. To follow this course, you should, of course, know your way around Houdini and you should be fairly comfortable with creative coding, preferably using Python, but if you just used VEX or something similar before, you should be able to follow along pretty easily as well. Now, this course won't have a typical structure where one setup is covered completely in one episode. Instead, throughout this course, we will take just a couple of machine learning applications in 3D graphics and take a really, really deep look at them over multiple episodes. And the first setup in this series will be a machine learning muscle deformer. And with this, I'm going to lead you into the first episode of this course, where I go over why I think this is one of the most exciting setups that I've seen in recent years, and also why it's the perfect beginner setup for 3D artists getting into machine learning. So if you like this preview, then you can support us on Patreon and already watch the next episode on our website. Details are in the description. But now, on with the show. So this is the end result that we want to replicate over the first couple of episodes of this course. This is the machine learning muscle or cloth deformer, which was first introduced in 2022 by Epic Games. What we're seeing here is a character rig, and this is with the ML deformer turned off, so just your typical standard weight painting right here. And with the ML deformer turned on, we can take what we usually get from a cloth simulation or a muscle simulation and turn this into a neural net and get real-time feedback over the deformation that this setup gives us. And again, this was first introduced by Epic Games and then later rebuilt by side effects in some Houdini versions. And we're going to take a deep look at this setup right here. And we're going to rebuild it. I'm going to quickly show you the end result of this first section of this chorus. So right here, I don't have a nice 3D model of a man. I have the somewhat creepy test geometry of a capybara. And I'm also not a CFX artist. And also I'm pretty lazy and very impatient. So instead of a full muscle sim down here, I'm just using the new wrinkle deformer that is new with Houdini 20.5. And if I turn this on and add some animation onto my capybara, we can see this wrinkle deformer working and we got some nice wrinkles here forming on the neck if we turn this on. This is the simulation setup and what we want to do over the next episodes is turn it into this admittedly a bit larger setup right here, which does not use the wrinkle deformer down here. It uses a neural net in here to do the same thing. And if we check the before and after, we can see, while they are not quite the same result, we do get very, very close with a machine learning setup right here. And the main advantage we get by using a machine learning model here is speed. Let me quickly demonstrate this. I'm first going to highlight my wrinkle deformer down here. And also you can find the seed file in the seed file download and also test this on your machine. But if I play this now and just take a look at the frame rate down here, we get a very respectable around 20 frames per second with this wrinkle deformer. However, once I switch to my machine learning deformer, now this really has a huge speed up. We're getting around four to five times the speed as with our standard simulation in here. And the very interesting thing with the setup is that this cook time down here, these frames per second won't change if I plug in for example, a much more involved muscle simulation down here, something that takes minutes for each frame to compute. This will run just as fast as the setup that I'm demoing here, and you get the exact same frames per second. So if I want to summarize this into some pros and cons for the ML muscle deformer, the main pro is it's blazing fast, basically. 
However, there are some cons, and these are your typical machine learning cons. First of all, there's no control over the sim after training, so on this wrinkle deformer right here, I got all of these parameters to tweak the look. On my machine learning model, I got nothing, basically. Also, this is purpose-built for one character, so in here I can plug in pretty much any character mesh, any rigged character in Houdini, and this will still work. In this case, I would have to retrain my network. And finally, and this is probably the main downside with this muscle deformer, is we don't get any inertia. So for example, if a big muscle does a big movement and it has lots of inertia left, it is going to swing back and forth a bit and a machine learning deformer won't be able to do that. So if you're a studio and you're taking a look at this setup, first of all, keep your CFX artists. You will absolutely still need them to first of all create the training data and also handle all the cases where you do care about inertia. But with this technique, I think more CFX will be coming to more areas that just couldn't have CFX before. So for example, something like games or serialized content. These are all cases where I think now CFX is a much more viable option than it was before. And also, if you're a character animator, you're probably going to get a lot more detailed and fast CFX previews now. However, this is the studio perspective. This is not what we are caring about. What we are caring about right here is, first of all, in here we have a pretty general way to speed up quite a lot of different Vellum simulations with machine learning. And also what we have here is pretty much the perfect beginner machine learning project for 3D artists. And let me quickly demonstrate what I mean by this. What I have here is a small little web app that I like quite a lot. This is the Netron web app, and it allows us to view different machine learning models in a sort of node editor style way. And what I have opened right here is a GPT-2 model, so a precursor to ChatGPT and now GPT-4 and so on. And as you've probably guessed, if we scroll down here, this is a big setup. This is a huge and complex setup, and it's really, really hard to comprehend what is going on here. So this is definitely above a pay grade right now. So maybe let's take a look at a simpler setup. Let's maybe take a look at, for example, a style transfer setup that we covered in some previous episodes about Onyx in Houdini. And yep, this is quite a bit smaller. You can also see some repetition going on here, however, this is still quite a lot to take in. So now, let's take a guess. How complex is this machine learning deformer model? A model that was introduced very recently in 2022. A model that was built by a huge corporation, Epic Games, and a model that does a really, really complex thing. A model that is able to learn all the physics behind the muscle simulation. Well, this is it. This is all of it. And again, I don't want you to understand any of the things that are going on here. But what you should pretty much notice right away is that this is a lot simpler than all the models that we took a look at before. And this is something that we can actually learn quite easily. And actually, all the next episodes will be structured into two parts. We have one first part where we're just going to learn about what this machine learning model does and how it works. And then we're also going to take a very deep look at all the other stuff going on around it. And this is just basic Houdini stuff. This is basic geometry processing like we're used to with our other Houdini setups. So I think this is a really, really nice mix between new stuff, that machine learning stuff right here, and some really, really neat and interesting techniques to make this all work in the end. Now, before I end this, I want to answer maybe the most central question for a setup like this. And this question is, how can we take a look at something like a muscle simulation and get the idea that this is something that might be worth automating with machine learning? Or why this might be a problem where machine learning is the right solution for it? What I have here is something that's a bit similar to a muscle simulation, but also a lot simpler. I have a ball. And I have a simulation that throws this ball a certain distance. And let's for a moment imagine that I can change only one thing, only one parameter of the simulation, and this is how hard I throw the ball. I can throw it very lightly, I can throw it very far like this, and I only care about one output parameter. I only care about how far this ball flies. So if I set a speed in here, let's say this speed right here, and I want to know how far this ball travels, I have to do a ton of simulation steps until it finally hits the ground, and now I know the final distance that this ball has traveled. And this is the sort of same thing with a muscle simulation. The thing I'm going to put in is a pose of a character, 
And the thing that I want to get out is I want to have some wrinkles on a character cloth or character skin or some bulges where some muscles are tensing up. However, to get to that result, I still have to do all those simulation steps in the middle, which I don't really care about, but they are necessary to get to this one result that I care about. So how could I make this easier? Well, the main idea here is, instead of throwing just one ball, maybe I throw a ton of balls, all with different initial velocities. And this might look something like this. And now, once I have thrown all my balls, I can build a diagram where I have the speed with which I throw in each ball here on the x-axis and on the y-axis I have the distance that each ball has traveled. And if we take a look at all our balls and how far they traveled, we get this really really nice distribution right here. And what this allows us to do is basically to draw a curve in here in this distribution to find a function that describes for a certain speed a certain distance traveled. So now that I have this function, that I have found this curve that matches all the balls that I've thrown, now if I want to know the distance that my ball will travel if I throw it at a certain speed, I don't have to do all those simulation steps. I can simply check this speed here on my x-axis, I can go to my y-axis and now find the distance. And there will be some error, but again the error should be quite manageable in this case and we should get a pretty accurate result for a distance of a ball. And this is basically the same thing that we're trying to build with a muscle deformer. Now instead of one single parameter that we're going to put in here, we're going to put in a lot of parameters, parameters that describe a character's pose. And we're also not going to get one single value out. We're going to get a ton of values out, basically how each point should move in space to create the deformation that the simulation would create. But the core idea stays the same. You want to find this central function that describes a simulation without actually simulating. Now, this won't work for any case. So for example, we could reimagine our setup a bit. Let's say instead of throwing a ball, we throw maybe a cube. And if we replicate the same experiment as before, yeah, we sort of get the same result, but no, also, since these are cubes, they can hit the ground at a funny angle and jump into some random direction and really introduce a lot more randomness into our setup in here. And also, if we graph this again, we still sort of get a curve, but again, we have a lot more outliers in here. And the result that we're getting in the end won't really match the result of our simulation right here. And this is sort of the same thing with a wrinkle deformer if, for example, we would try to create some very loose skin, some skin with lots of tiny wrinkles. And I'm sorry for this wrinkly capybara in here. This is just a good example. It's just also very, very creepy. But again, this is something where machine learning deformer probably wouldn't do a good job. We really want those nice and large wrinkles. And also finally, again, we don't have just one parameter, for example, speed and distance, we have a lot more parameters. And simply to drive this point home, if we just add one more parameter, one more thing that we can vary for our input to a ball throw example, if we, for example, add a different mass to all of our balls, now our diagram is already in 3D space and the function that we want to find is not just a line anymore, it is now a 3D distorted plane. And again, since we have way more parameters that we're going to change with our machine learning deformer in the end, this is where machine learning really, really shines. So finally, to summarize, if we would take a look at a problem and we want to find out if this is a machine learning problem or not, at least in this case, it's a machine learning problem when we're just interested in the end result of a simulation, not all these steps in between. And it's a simulation where there's not too much randomness, so for example if we're throwing balls instead of cubes, and also where we need just a lot of input and output variables and we need an efficient way to find this function that we're looking for. And also just for our ML deformer setup that we're building right here, the last requirement is that the mesh topology has to remain unchanged. There are ways around that, ways that we might take a look at in future episodes, however in this case this is one very hard requirement that we have for our setup to work. But with this, with this introduction done, I think it's time to end this episode. And in the next episode, we're going to take a look at 
why this setup, this network that in the end drives all of our muscle simulations looks the way it does. And we're going to build a pretty nice and simplified version of the setup completely in Houdini. And then after that, jump into Python to actually build it with a machine learning library. But until next time, it's cheers and goodbye.